Yes, you read that right. What if I told you that you too can tune your very own headphones and it is way easier and simpler than you may think? All right, fine, it's EQ. All right, time to earn me some bread. This video is sponsored by Linsol. Looking for some chai fi eye yams, but not sure where exactly to buy them, why not consider Linsol? They've been around in the hobby for a great many years now, and they've established their reputation as being one of the most trusted stores in the online chai fi space. They carry some of the most popular and hyped brands available now, ranging from DAX, AMs, headphones, and of course, eye yams. They also ship virtually everywhere, so there's no need to worry about all those pesky geographical restrictions. Go to linsole.com, tell them I sent you, support the people who support me. You know the audiophile crowd is kind of a funny bunch, you, they, they get really pissed off by EQ, like the mere existence of EQ somehow offends them. Like, oh no, I can upgrade my headphones for free. This doesn't deserve to exist. But yes, today we'll be talking about EQ. I kind of touched on this topic in a video on my last channel, but that was kind of shallow and I didn't really go into the weeds on how actually to EQ. In that last video, I just kind of went over what kind of EQ software that you can use, the concept of auto EQ, Wavelet and all of that. But just a quick roundup, if you are using Windows, use Equalizer APO with the Peace graphical user interface. If you're on Android, use Power M. And if you're on iPhone, Go fuck yourselves. It's not me who's saying that, but the fact that Apple isn't providing a system-wide EQ on iOS is... So I went through the concept of auto EQ in that video, which is a very brain dead way of EQing your headphones to basically the harm and target. The auto EQ project is a very, very significant project helmed by the very venerable Jacko Pasanen. I hope you're pronouncing your name right. And almost every single headphone slash IEM that I've measured gets thrown into this project and then he shits out basically a harm and target target profile for said headphone slash IAM. Very simple, just copy all the profile numbers and values and whatever. If you're on Android, Wavelet basically does all of that for you without any extra, you know, intervention. But some people would like to kick it up a notch, you know, maybe you don't like Harmon Target, maybe you just want to add additional tweaks to the existing profiles. After all, the whole point of EQing is to your tastes. You don't want to shoehorn yourself in any specific target curve, especially in a hobby as subjective as this one. So here I present to you my graph comparison tool with all of my measurements. Today we will be talking about how exactly to modify certain targets and modify certain profiles in order to fit your own personal preferences much better. So if you look at the graph tool right now, you would see that, oh, you know, there's the graph. And of course there is a target. Now do you know there's an additional button on the top left corner called equalizer, which is what we'll be using today. Just click on it. From here, you could just press this button, the auto EQ function built in into the graph comparison tool right off the bat. Now for additional context, the graph tool is an open source piece of software built a long time ago by a godlike figure by the name of Marshall Lockbomb. Shoutouts to you, my man. This EQ functionality was thereafter added by a person by the name of Rosa. If you want to take a look at their GitLab and their version of a graph tool, the links are all in the description below. But since we're here, let's just shout out Super Reviews, another YouTuber who's also responsible for a lot of the new cosmetic improvements as well as some slight additional functionality changes on top of what whatever Marshall has built. So hey, if you're looking for another audiophile YouTuber to subscribe to, wanna go down and check out his channel and tell him I sent you, hey? Anyways, back on topic. So if you wanted to, you could just, you know, click. And there it is. It automatically creates an EQ profile that adheres whatever IEM that you just selected or headphone to the target curve that you have selected. This is a very, very branded way to EQ something to a selected target curve. If you're just gonna EQ something to Harmon target, you might as well just go to Jaco's auto EQ repository. Everything has already been pre-generated for you. So once you click on this, you basically have two options. One is to export this file. In this case, you just click on it and then it just downloads it for you and then just import it into your EQ software of choice. In this case, I'm on Windows. I use, again, the Peace graphic user interface with Equalizer APO. The other way is a little bit more tedious. Of course, you can just copy and paste all of the little like values here and then just paste it again onto your Equalizer software of choice. Now, one thing that you have to take note whenever you're trying to implement your EQ profile of choice is that you have to make sure that your preamp values, your gain values matches the 
highest boost in your profile. So for example, in this uh, little EQ profile that I use daily, I have a 12 dB of sub bass. But because of that, I have to then put my preamp, my gain at negative 12 as well. Again, I have to match up the highest boost with the preamp values and basically you know that's that's how it works you want to make sure that whatever eq profile that you're using doesn't actually clip the audio signal but beyond that the also eq function on my graph comparison tool allows you to do stuff like equalize one headphone or rem to another headphone or rem so if, for example if you look here i'm just going to clear out the target curves just add on some random one here and then auto eq should directly eq the dusk to the 1501 click on it and there you go the green line is the dusk equalized to this new iem simple and i've kind of have to warn people that this is kind of a paid feature after all in this case you're kind of using three comparisons on the tool and my free version allows you only up to two and of course if you want some other targets that aren't on the graph tool you could also again upload your own target although uh, this one is also a paid tool after all um I gotta eat. But in these cases, these are very much power user functions. They're very advanced features that only very experienced people would actually use. In these cases, you know, you might just, just pay for it. Just throw in a few bucks, you know, why not? But really all of this is just the brain dead stuff. After all, now how do you exactly tweak something to fit your own tastes a lot better. Now we get to a point where I like to try and combine auto EQ with some additional tweaks from your end to get the profile closer to your tastes. I'm still going to use the dusk again, so I'm just going to put it back up to like Harmon, I guess. And then I'll equalize, but I'll equalize it in a very specific fashion. Now watch what I'm doing here. I'm going to set the auto EQ range to 200 to 20,000. Because what I want to do here is to allow you to adjust the base levels of the Harmon profile to your taste. After all, Harmon target is more the average preference curve. It's not necessarily one that's individually tailored to your own personal uh, listener preference. So press the auto EQ function, wait for a while, and then bam, we got something that is, you know, close to Harmon. It's not exactly Harmon. Now at this point, you could add something that's called a low shelf, which once you click here is LSQ. Set the frequency at maybe 150. Set the Q values at, the default is usually about 0.7 and gain no, minus five. Oh, let's just adjust it here, minus 30. Yeah. So this is where you can start to play around with the base values that you like. So for example, this is um, well, definitely far less of a base boost than Harmon. But if you want, you could just adjust it to like negative three to get slightly higher. Uh, you know, go all the way to zero if you want it at this range. Oh, hell, just boost it higher, put it to two, match it to Harmon or even with Harmon with a little bit more bass if you want to. Mm. So with the combination of auto EQ alongside with your own little tweaks, you can adjust bass to taste. But it's not just to bass, after all, you could also adjust treble. My usual recommendations for a first level of tweaking would just to do a low shelf and a high shelf tweak. So if you use the plus button here, you could go to high shelf, Put it at, I don't know, 6,000, I guess, at per usual, 0.7, and then put it up to 5. And then you have extra treble. So yes, again, my usual recommendations is to just use the auto EQ profiles and then tweak the base levels from there. In fact, my own IEF neutral target allows you to basically start from scratch. Again, if you want to start it like this, IEF neutral, set it to 20 if you want to, auto EQ, wham bam. Add on one extra one, low shelf, 120. You could adjust that as well. 0.7 and five. Base boost, there you go, easy peasy. Now you will realize that I'm doing all of this on a very visual scale. After all, it's honestly quite daunting to start an EQ profile from scratch. At that point, you kind of have to know exactly what each individual frequency range does, what boosts does and what cuts do. And I don't think that's really appropriate for a beginner to, to basically learn everything within a span of like, what, 
a few minutes just so you could just play around with an EQ filter? No. What sort of time you're just gonna bring up the EQ and then start to play around the sliders, right? Just put like, just put it up, you know, play up and down while you're playing with music just to see exactly what each frequency range does. But just as a little primer, I'm just gonna give you some examples of what each frequency range does or, you know, affects. Here's the differences that you basically hear when you use a low shell filter, aka a bass boost. Here are the differences if you're using a high shell filter, aka, you know, adjusting the treble. And here are just some of the few of the ranges that I'll like you guys to pay attention to. Here is what I'll consider the mud region, which is the region between 250Hz and 500Hz. The danger zone is what I consider the 500 hertz to so about the 1500 hertz. So after you use auto EQ, try not to touch this region too much because it's really going to affect the sense of timbre that we get. And then we have the upper mid range, which lies around the 2000 to 6000 hertz region. A lot of sound engineers call this the presence region or even the clarity region. Now, if you're going to be trying to adjust these areas, my suggestion would be to use a very low Q filter. What that means is that the filters aren't very narrow. They're very wide. The typical sound engineer's philosophy would be to cut narrow, but boost wide. And I do think that the philosophy kind of works in this case. The differences between what happens in the mastering room versus what we experience as end users is a lot different. For example, in the mastering room, they have full control over each individual track. What this means is that when when a sound engineer uses EQ in the studio, their EQ profiles can be tailored for every single instrument. So an EQ profile that works the best for vocals isn't going to be used on guitars, for instance. It's going to be using a completely different EQ profile. But we as the end users, we don't have this luxury. Whatever EQ profile that we use is going to be basically done on the final master track. What this means is that whatever changes that we make is going to affect everything at once. Vocals, guitars, drums, bass, etc. Etc. We do not have the luxury of choice and therefore we have to really think about the boosts and the cuts that we have to do on uh, whatever EQ profile that we are using. Which is why I always advocate things like the notch into the boost at like let's say a 200 hertz bass rise because what that does is that it s sort of separates the bass boost from the rest of the melodic frequencies. When you boost the region of about 200 to 500 hertz or maybe even higher than that, you tend to get the bass bleeding into the rest of the frequencies. This is where the term bass bleed comes from. When you see all of these IEMs with that 1000 Hertz down bass boost, yeah, at that point it sounds muddy because that's what happens. The bass boost just keeps going on and on and basically cuts into the fundamental frequencies of the instruments that we are so used to hearing. Now, there are some caveats when trying to do EQ with this graph on Paris 2. For example, if you're looking at a headphone like uh, like the KSC 75, for instance, look at that. The, the, there's, it has no bass. It has no bass extension by virtue of it being practically an ear speaker. In this case, sure, you could use an auto EQ function and then if you just auto EQ like this, it will probably spit something out, right? But my suggestion is always to not boost anything above 10 decibels, at least, or at least try not to, especially in the bass frequencies. My suggestion here would just to leave it at 200 hertz and then just auto EQ from there. And you know, you're gonna get the bass roll off. Cause here's the thing, if you try and force a driver like this into playing the bass frequencies, it's really not gonna sound good. So hell, if you're gonna try and put like a uh, Harman, the Harman target right there, and then auto EQing, 
you could try. It's not gonna sound good. <laughs> and of course the auto EQ functionality isn't going to do too much wonders if your IEM is already bad. So for example, if you're using a, a I don't know, nah, never mind. Never mind, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch, I wouldn't touch that topic. So yes, there's a quick-ish crash course on how exactly to EQ your favorite headphone into something that you might prefer even more. EQ is free, just use it. If it gets you slightly closer to your true personal preferences, why the hell not, right? Don't let the other audio files fool you into thinking that this is somehow a, an evil thing. Hell, I myself use EQ. Some people might consider me the audio file king. The, the nerd the nerd emperor and if i can use it you know why not you just just use it don't care it's free just do it fuck it man i do hope that you've taken some good lessons from this uh, little video of mine if not well uh, tough and of course as per usual to my big money boys here are all of your glorious names you have subscribed to my 20 dollar tier on my patreon and for those who have subscribed to my 30 dollar tier allow me to speak out your beautiful names mike mad face dennis laughing psychonaut jerry liu hk57 fisk Nuf, tj daily mr overlord trail charlie row 222 krenner gal bell trimo rodrigo the angry persian danimals uh Alicia Burrito, Zuni Ruero, Alex Lawrence, Corbin, and Andrew. Thank you all. Nothing much else to say on this front. I hope you guys have a beautiful week. See you next week and don't die. Fuck off.